Hey everybody, I decided to do a little quick update here. Um, I was kind of holding off until I got something worth showing, and I, I think I actually have something worth showing. I'll start on the start first with the one I haven't made a, as much progress on, and that's my uh, Opal Cadet here. I do have the suspension under it now, or on it mostly. I got I still got some more to do, but for the most part, it's it's connected. I have to make a um, sway bar for the front, which I started, and a tie rod, and put a steering box and stuff in. So it's this, actually everything I do is kind of like I bounce back and forth. I don't really spend a lot of time on, on anything at one time. But I have been, I did a little more body work on it and primer. So it's, it's coming along. I, I got the engine i i wired put the spark plug wires on the magneto put uh fuel injection lines and started putting the injector stacks on made a fuel pump for the front cam driven fuel pump that's uh that magneto is one of them morgan auto detail and it's the last one I had, so I wanted to use it in here because that car had a magneto in it. And since I I always say that I'm I don't feel comfortable working on more than two cars at a time, I get a little frustrated. I must be full of it because I I seem to always start another one before I finish. So I show you what I started here, and I think what I what I enjoy the most is the initial start of the project. I get real excited when I start something, and then it's like eh, I got to keep fighting along to finish. But years ago, I had a Corvette like this model. Not you know not a real car. I mean I had a real one too, but I'm not talking about that. Um, and what I did, I'm holding my hand over it for a minute till I explain it. But I had this um, fastback Corvette 67, I believe the one other one I had. And I had a leftover nose from uh, Firebird. I don't think it was a Trans Am, I'm not sure. And I'm not 100% sure of the year, maybe 90, 91. And I grafted it on and it was, I really liked it. And I wanted to do another one. I don't even know what happened to that car, you know, where it ever got to. But as luck would have it, I had one more of those noses in my stash. So I stuck it on there. And I, I like it. I, th I think it looks really cool. The first time I did it, I didn't fill in the headlight. You know, the original Corvette headlights, it was kind of like a quick job. So this one, I filled them in. And I actually, I extended, followed the lip around. Well, I, actually, my whole nose, I didn't have the side pieces. I only I had cut it here, so I had to make all this, and I added an extra piece of styrene to make the lip, and then I followed it to the back, or to the you know along the side with another piece of styrene, and I ended up cutting pockets into the quarter panels so I could get the the floor pan up far enough, and made the roll cage, and I I did these side panels here so I can kind of use a flatter rear window even though I do have the one that came with this body but it's they're thick you know the kit windows are always thick and I usually like to make my own but this one I, I'm going to use the kit windshield and I had a little struggle to get the cage it happens to me all the time I make a roll cage and then I go to put the body on when the windows are in and it doesn't fit and even this one you know I have it pinned but there's a little bit of tension on it. It it clears and it's not it's not extreme. That's not going to break anything. But it's just that you can't just set the body down and expect it to go all the way down. You got to you know put the pins in. But I just now found that I'm going to have some more uh, major surgery because these parts are old pro stock, and because of the way I have have it put up into the body. And the firewall, you know, to get it to fit up in there, it hangs down. And I just just now noticed how far below that hangs. So I'm going to have to probably make a new tunnel. I'm going to have to cut the tunnel out and raise the transmission up. And then cut this off. 
Not sure what engine transmission combination it's going to be yet. Don't know what wheels are going to be on it. But I've been looking for something that I could try some of these pearl powders and make a really nice color. So that's, that's one of the reasons I started on this, just so I'd have something to paint because everything else, ha you know, the other two cars have to be a, to match a real car. But that leads me to the the big project, which here's the engine getting started on. But here is the big project. And I got to thank Jimmy Ledford for the advice here on the doors. And this is like way over my head. I've never done a... Uh, cut doors out and hinged them um, so it's it's all new to me and I've got I have to do a little bit of shaving here that I mean they open but they'll only open let me pull this down here they'll only open like this far so I got to shave the back side of the door a little bit so it'll clear the fender and I guess a lot of people do this that the, the door goes in behind the fender but that really didn't work out for me and I believe it's because of where the pivot of the hinge is. It's a little far forward. And it's kind of hard to go back anymore with this combination. But the front end is now on with magnets. I made an inner structure here. Oh, actually, it's not on the one side. And I hope that didn't mess me up because I just put the magnets on. Let me see if I can pull it off. i show you where I got magnets. Oh, that one didn't stick either. I I have styrene in here that is or was supposed to be glued to the firewall, but apparently it didn't because it just came off with it. But that side worked. This is an extra piece. Hey, when you get a something piece of styrene with a magnet in it, it just finds its way to where wherever you, there's another metal piece or another magnet. But just for curiosity, let's see if I do line this up. Yeah, it goes back in. It, and what I had problem here was that the front end was kind of drooped. So I had to actually pull it up when I put these magnets in. So I still have to attach the other side. But with the front end off, the doors will open. And I have magnets here i have magnets inside the door jam so when it goes closed you know it it locks in where it's supposed to be and the doors will come off i'm not sure how much trouble it'll be let's try the other one and i keep getting out of the frame of the camera Yeah, see, they come off, and they're just uh, straight pins that I bent 90 degrees and put these posts on here. Again, Jimmy Ledford to the rescue here. He's the one who gave me his method of doing this and worked out pretty nice. I will have some some gap adjustments to do everywhere but I can add styrene and sand it off where it needed in fact I think I did that to the trunk lid um, yeah because I because I lost width when I cut it out so I just I just glued it to a flat piece of styrene like I had a flat sheet laying on the bench put some super glue dropped it down and then just cut around it so it, it gave me like 10 10 or 20 thousandths I believe that is but it it tightened up the gap on the trunk yeah you can see that that's not bad and I I don't know if I mentioned this in the last video that I had dropped this body and broke both the rock or the um, windshield posts broke them both off so I kind of taped everything together with the doors to get my gaps and I super glued them back on, and then I stuck some pieces of straight pin. Um, I don't know if you can see a piece of straight pin there. I super glued. So so far it's holding up, and hopefully it will keep holding up. And I think 
I have rear suspension started putting together for it. This is kind of a first for me too. I normally don't put the struts and stuff on. Usually I get, you know, get this all mocked together, paint the frame, and then I put glue it to the pan for good. And then I glue all, put the motor in, then I glue all this on and glue the struts on. And this time I'm trying it a little bit different. I don't know if it's going to look good or not. I mean, I hope so. I don't know if I showed the rest of the roll cage. I can pull the pull the pins out of here. And then this will come off. Oh, forgot about the door. Okay, there you can see the straight pins glued in to hold the windshield posts on. And you can see my door jams, which I had to I had to modify them to clear the roll cage. I, th I thought I was doing good by putting a nice door jam in there, and then it, it hit the roll cage, so I had to actually clearance it. I'll do a little bit more, you know, smoothing that out later, but everything fits right now. So now I should be able to get this door off. It's a little bit of a snug fit. Yeah, there it is. But there you can see my roll cage. So I'm hoping it's going to turn out good. And I figure I'd give you guys a little bit of um, background here. I don't know if anybody's wondering how I ended up in Thailand or not. But um, try to make a long story short. I ended up having a Thai wife. And I brought her to America for five years. And I kind of figured I would never be able to afford to retire in America because I, I failed to plan. And it's like late in the game here. And I'm trying to pull up a plan. And I didn't have a house anymore, so I was paying rent. So my Social Security, I knew wasn't going to be a lot because I never made big money. And my IRA was, you know... Eh, fair. I mean, it was okay, but it wouldn't have been enough to last me for a real long time, I don't think, especially with the cost of living back there. And I, you know, checked in, realized how the cost of living here in Thailand is a whole lot less. I mean, not for everything. There are a lot of things that are more expensive, you know, as expensive or more expensive than America. But your basic living expenses are much cheaper um, you know, gas is just probably a little bit more expensive than it was in Pennsylvania, which is where I came from. Um, cars, yes, definitely are more expensive. But your housing, your electric, your utilities, all that's much cheaper. There is no uh, property taxes. So I, I can, I, I'm not going to say I can live on my Social Security, which I just actually started collecting, just uh, two months ago, and I, I don't know that I could live on it unless I don't, unless I would want to live as, you know, miserly as possible and have no luxuries, not be able to go to the hobby store and buy paint, you know, it'd just be the, the bare minimum to get by, but with the Social Security and a little bit of my IRA, I can, I can live decent, you know, I still can't be extravagant, but I can live decent, so that's how I ended up here and why I'm here was the weather you know I can't complain about the weather even though the, the humidity and the rainy seasons coming it still beats the cold I mean the, the coldest I ever saw here I think was like low 50s Fahrenheit overnight and by 10 o'clock it's up in the 70s already on those days so I, I ride bicycle almost every day I try to you know try to keep active that way because my model building is definitely not active so I uh, I ride uh, about 20 between 25 and 35 miles a, a day and usually five days a week so it, it kind of keeps me in shape and I really enjoy it gets me out in the in the gets my day started nice that's pretty much my story and any of you guys have any questions or anything, you know, 
if you're curious like I, I'm a curious kind of guy. I always like to know things. So I don't have, you know, my li my uh, my life's no secret or anything. So anybody wants to know anything, just send me an email or leave a comment or something. If you, you know, if you don't care, you don't care. That's fine. I'm, you know, no big deal to me. But like I said, nothing's a secret. So if anybody's curious about anything, just let me know. And I noticed I picked up a couple new subscribers, so I want to thank everybody for subscribing and, and clicking that like button and leaving comments. I don't make a lot of videos because I well, I subscribe to so many channels and I, I waste a lot. I hate to say waste because you guys have good, good videos, but it just takes so much time to watch. Even when I don't have to work a job, it takes a lot of time to watch all these videos and, and still have time to build my models ride my bike live my life and you know so it's a balance and i try to i don't want to flood everybody with more videos so i try to keep mine to maybe once a week or or around that area that you know that time frame once in a while if i have something really cool going on i might put out two in a week but not usually so that's that's pretty much my story and uh, thank everybody for watching, thanks for subscribing, and I'll talk at you later next time. Bye.